A couple of years ago, the British government produced a white paper on confronting so-called online harms. Now, it has been updated and reviewed in December just gone, and they intend to bring it to Parliament as soon as the Parliamentary Diary allows. It's very relevant at the moment, given the censorship that is happening on the internet, where the President of the United States has had his access to social media removed for something he hasn't done. Now, reading the white paper, you only need to read the first few lines and read between the lines to know exactly what this is about. The word hate appears very quickly. That always rings alarm bells for me. We know what that means. We know whose opinions will constitute hate and whose won't. An example of what hate online can lead to, the example given is the mosque attack in New Zealand a few years ago. That doesn't mention all the attacks in Britain or in France or in Germany or anywhere else in Europe, just the one in New Zealand. So you know, again, where they're going with this. They have pretended, and they are pretending, that this is about confronting child abuse, the grooming and uh, uh, exploitation of children online, and terrorism. But this rings very hollow, and it rings very hollow for a couple of reasons. If the government is serious about stopping the sexual exploitation of children, then why aren't they serious about doing it offline? Rape gangs are still operating all over this country, still with absolute impunity, and a useless waste of money public inquiry refused again to identify, really identify, who is responsible for these rape gangs, who they are comprised of. It's a cover-up, pure and simple. They're doing nothing at all about sexual exploitation of children in the real world, but they're using it as an excuse to restrict our freedom on the internet. They also talk about terrorism and confronting terrorism. They use these two examples because who can object? Who can say, no, you mustn't stop the sexual exploitation of children or cut off a route for terrorists to communicate with each other? No one will object to that. But again, it's all completely hollow. And it's all completely hollow because most of the terror attacks that have happened in this country and across Europe were carried out by so-called asylum seekers and refugees. Every single day, asylum seekers and refugees, by the way, they are neither, continue to enter this country illegally. Nothing is done about it. So if the government is serious about confronting terrorism, then why don't they close the borders to the very same countries, the very same ideology, the very same people that have been responsible for carrying out terror attacks in this country? They don't. They won't. It will continue because they don't give a damn about stopping terrorism. This is all a sham. It's all a lie. What they are really going to do is restrict us ever further and stop us speaking our minds online. That's the real intention here. And as I said, you only have to read the first paragraph of this white paper to know that that's the real intention here. People with the wrong opinions will be cut out of public discussion online. That's the aim and that's where this is going. And if you want to know how serious this gets, I'll remind you, the President of the United States, the elected President of the United States, has been silenced by a group of billionaires in California. And the hypocritical lying left wing is cheering this on. Our hypocritical lying politicians are cheering this on, all the while talking about the sanctity of democracy. It's enough to make you want to throw up. These are lies. Our freedoms are being taken away every single day. We lose more and more of our ability to speak, to speak our minds and to take an alternative view than the one sanctioned by the British government. Poland, on the other hand, has done something very interesting. Poland has threatened to issue fines against big tech companies who close people's accounts, who shut people off, who shut people out of the conversation because they don't have woke, so-called progressive views. This is a much more 
powerful way to do this. If you really want to protect people from harm online, then protect them from it offline as well. If you're serious about protecting people from harm at all, can you do it offline as well? Harm online is not what this is about. They consider alternative views, non-woke views, to be harm. And that is what is being targeted. So we should take a leaf out of Poland's book and introduce protections for freedom of speech. Make sure that people are able to speak online and, and, and Poland's approach is, if it's not a crime in Poland, it shouldn't get people thrown off social media. They're absolutely right. And this is the way to tackle it. Trump missed an opportunity to deal with this, to make sure we have free speech on social media. Poland isn't going to miss such an opportunity. And it is to their great credit that they understand how to approach this, to hit big tech where it hurts, in their pockets, the only thing they really care about. It is a matter of emergency now. We are in an emergency situation with regard to our freedoms. And social media is just too big and too powerful now not to warrant serious regulation. We have got to start regulating social media and it begins with punishing them for closing off millions of people from public conversation. We've got to get our freedom back, online and off. And if we want to protect people, let's start in the real world and not the virtual one. Otherwise, it's all just lies, hollow excuses to take away our ability to oppose government policy. We need to understand this. We need to understand it now. And we need to read between the lines and understand thoroughly what is happening here. Fight back for your freedoms. The way to do that is to remove this lot from Parliament, because you know there'll be no opposition from the Labour Party to this. They'll all agree wholeheartedly, because they all want the same thing. They want to close ranks against the people, stop us even discussing things with each other, and stop any attempt at any uprising against this censorship and tyranny. Don't let them. Go to alternative social media. Let's build that up. Let's stop, stop bowing down to these censors and fight for our freedom before it really is too late. <laughs>